Hi, I'm Floyd Teeter, the Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the South Jordan, Utah, North Shore Stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If this is your first visit with us, you may want to first review some of the prior videos on this channel so that this one will make sense. If you're a return visitor, hey, we're glad you're back. In this video, we'll be talking about emergency power, keeping the juice flowing during a power outage. As you may recall, a disruption to the electrical supply is something we're likely to see during a disaster or emergency. In fact, the power outage itself may be the emergency. That's how dependent we all are on electricity. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about a long-term power outage, not a few hours or a day, but days or weeks. I've personally lived through a week-long power outage, and it is definitely not my idea of fun. Now, many people will do fine with short-term power outages. The biggest concern is something along the lines of, how do I charge my phone? Or hearing one more time, Dad, when will my switch work again? But longer-term power outages can be a disaster in and of themselves. So how do you keep the juice flowing during a power outage? Let's talk through a few ideas. We'll start with the small ideas, and then we'll scale up the larger ones. Let's start with batteries. You know, the type you have laying around the house. Home use batteries, D cells, Cs, nine volt, double A's, triple A's, alkalins, NICADs, lithiums. Some batteries are rechargeable and others are only good for one use. Never ever attempt to recharge a one use battery. That's dangerous. You're just asking for trouble. The trick here with batteries is to keep a stash of the batteries you use, preferably in a central location where the entire family can find them. And while some batteries have expiration date labels and some alkalines have a shelf life of over 10 years, I recommend you rot rotate them all. Use the old batteries first and keep your stash levels up by adding newly purchased batteries, kind of a first in, first out type of thing. And a pro tip learned from experience. You'll need more than you think you do. Battery backups are small backup charging items for your phone, your tablet, or your laptop. To get the most out of these in an emergency situation, expand your thinking about their use. Can you use a battery backup to charge other devices? Like maybe a flashlight with a USB charging slot. To get best performance out of battery backups, you'll want to periodically drain them by using them to recharge stuff and then recharge them. This keeps the backup ready for when you really need it. And put some brain power into how you plan to recharge your battery backup device when the power is out. More on that in a bit. That brings us to generators. And we could talk about generators for days and days, but I'll try to keep it brief here. Generators come in all shapes and sizes using all types of fuels. But some things to think about when choosing a generator or planning the uses for the generator you already own. First, how will you use your generator? What kind of load for how long? Will you use it to power your whole house 24 seven? Just periodically run it to keep the fridge and freezer cool or run it long enough to recharge, say, your whole house battery. Your use will determine how large of a generator you need. Next, consider fuel. Natural gas is great for as long as it flows. Propane is easy to store for long periods, but may be tough to get after a disaster strikes. Gas and diesel degrade over time, even with stabilizing agents. So you'll need to rotate your storage. Solar generators are cheap fuel, but they're expensive to purchase and typically can't generate enough power to really power the, the larger types of things like appliances or your whole home. Finally, think about periodic testing and maintenance. Check your owner's manual for more info but you'll want to be confident that your generator will start and function when you need it the most. Whole house batteries are deep cycle batteries that are designed for continuous use and power your entire home. 
These may be the best option if someone in your home relies on life-preserving medical equipment. Now, they're very costly, but they do a great job right up until the time they run out of juice. That time can vary from a few days to a week, but a whole house battery then raises the question of how you'll recharge it during an extended power outage after that juice runs out. You're gonna use your generator, solar panels on the roof, certainly something to consider if whole house batteries are part of your approach. So we've gone over a few different devices you can use during an extended power outage. But the real win here is to combine these devices and approaches to meet your specific needs. So think about combinations. Some examples, you could use NICAD batteries and buy a small solar charger designed specifically for recharging NICADs. You could pick up a small and expensive foldable solar panel. They come in a kit to recharge your battery backups. We do this in our house. And then we use the battery backups to recharge our phones, our tablets, our laptops, our ham radio batteries, our flashlights, and other tools. And when it drains, we just connect it to the solar panel and recharge it. You could combine rooftop panels with a whole house battery. You could recharge everything you can by periodically running a generator. The point is to get creative about combinations to get the most out of your approach. Well, that pretty well wraps up our brief discussion of alternate power sources during a power outage. So put some thought and some action into your approach to emergency power, keeping the juice flowing. That's it for this time. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, and be ready.